So apparently everything is about Potomac this week because Candace recently did an interview talking about colorism on the cast and who she's currently good with. You might be surprised. And our friends over at the Bravo docket are breaking breaking down the recent reasonably shady trademark situation with Eminem. And we've got to talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion part one ratings. Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So this video is just to catch you up on everything that's been going on with our girls over at the Real Housewives of Potomac. We reviewed recently with Leo Lynn and Grace Report the first part of the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion, and they did fairly well. I'm actually surprised because, you know, someone laughed at me the other day. I, I thought maybe they would get over a million, and I have to say, they deserved over a million. Again, keep in mind, the, these ratings are based off of Sunday night and the live watchers. They garner millions of ratings after, okay? So according to our friends over at TV Deeds, they're... Episode 18, which was their reunion, had a demo of 0.28 between the ages of 18 and 49 with 866,000 viewers, which is not bad. That's, that's good. It's good. Again, I'm a little surprised. I thought even with the live viewers, they would have garnered over a million. But that doesn't change the social media engagement that happens. All of these things are considered when they, when the Bravo executives and NBC are looking at what is this show bringing in regards to everything else on our show. So not bad at all. But as you also know, we did a separate video talking about the recent op opposition that Eminem posed towards the Reasonably Shady's trademark. They fought for a trademark for Reasonably Shady back in February of 2022. Now we're hearing that Eminem, who owns the, the trademark for Slim Shady and the word Shady in the area of which handles t-shirts, merch, and things like that. So he was opposing, opposing this trademark because apparently him and his team feel as if this will confuse consumers. But as you know, I always love to hear from our attorneys, and one of our favorites includes the Bravo Docket. So they posted this recently, and again, be sure to check out their podcast if you want expansive conversation on reality TV and the legal side of things. So they write this in regards to what's going on with this Eminem and Reasonably Shady, Robin Dixon and Giselle Bryant podcast and their trademark. They write, uh, Real Slim Shady versus Real Housewives. Eminem tries to block Reasonably Shady trademark. The rappers opposing the trademark application filed by the Real Housewives of Potomac stars Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon. So they break it down. This is why I love them. They break it down. So what is this exactly? They said, a trademark opposition is where someone argues that a soon-to-be registered trademark should not be registered. Okay? So what happened? Eminem owns the trademark for Shady and Slim Shady, as I mentioned. His opposition claims he believes he will be damaged if Giselle and Robin's trademark, Reasonably Shady, is granted. He claims confusion is unavoidable between the two. And some of you disagree with that. So what's going to happen next? So they give us an update and they say Robin and Giselle have 40 days to file a response, but their lawyer issued a statement saying there is no likelihood of confusion here. The Bravo docket continues and gives their analysis. It says the governing body here, the, the patent and the trademark office will look to what goods and services the, marks, the trademarks cover and will analyze whether there is a likelihood of confusion between the marks such that someone seeing Robin and Giselle would be confused into thinking it was affiliated with Eminem and whether Robin and Giselle's mark will dilute Eminem's trademarks. So as I mentioned to you before, the Reasonably Shady's trade, their trademark filing, they were looking for trademarks in candles, merchandise, makeup, lip gloss, things like that. But they also post and, and outline what Reasonably Shady is. And according to their trademark, they, they consider it an entertainment services, namely providing podcasts in the field of dating, relationships, marriage, etc. 
just describing what that is. Slim Shady's trademark falls under entertainment services, namely the presentation of live musical performances by a recording artist. So they're both in the world of entertainment. That That's his trademark for Slim Shady. One of the other things that stood, that stood out to me and why I wanted to mention it during this video was that this is not the first time that Eminem and his team have opposed someone's trademark. And it looks as if recently, back in January of this year, he also opposed someone else's trademark with the name Shady in it. One is Shady Wear Boutique LLC, Shady Stay Happy and Do You. Someone else he was was S Rays Incorporated, where they have Shady Rays. Another person, Shady Character Unlimited, was also reached out to back in, well, first of all, S Rays, his opposition came to that back in 2021. The Shady Character opposition was done in 2003. I would really want to know the update in regards to that. Did he win in that regard? Or were they granted? I mean, all of this can be looked up. I wonder if they were granted the right to use the name. But like I said, I'm going to continue to follow this story and see where this goes for Robin and Giselle. I know, look, we they're not a lot of people love them right now, but some of you are defending them and saying, well, I don't see that there would be confusion. Well, that's not really up to us. That's not really up to us. But I'm going to continue to follow this and it, it will be interesting to see what the final decision will be. I don't necessarily believe there will be confusion just because the name Shady's in it. I mean, that's a term that we've been using, but... We weren't the ones to trademark it either. So then there's that. Then there's that. But let's talk about a recent interview that Candace Dillard Bassett did with a fellow content creator here on YouTube by the name of Archie. As always, we cite our sources in the description so you can take a look at their full conversation. But what stood out to me was the conversation about colorism. As I mentioned to you before, when we were talking about the trailer for this reunion, I was like, I didn't see any conversation about colorism. But I was like, okay, maybe they just didn't put it in the trailer. Well, according to Candace, they do address it. And some of the things that she says in, in regards to this, she says, first of all, she finds the conversation on this show um, when it comes to colorism as weird. But she also points out she found it interesting that certain people remain silent when addressing this conversation because at the end of the day, this would benefit you if, we we, if, we, if we're talking about discrimination. You grew up in a predominantly white space. Yes. Where are you from? Kansas City, Missouri. <gasps> okay. Yes. Private schools and stuff. Yes, same. Yes. So how has that influenced how you show up on the show as a woman mm -hmm. who has experienced colorism and racism, mm -hmm. et cetera? Um, I mean, it has informed everything about the way that I show up, the way yeah. that I move, the way that I speak, the way that I walk the earth, yeah. even. And I'm, it makes me proud to be Black, and it makes me want to be louder and more disruptive um, because there is this um, desire to to shut to shut us up. Yeah. Um. And the colorism conversation has been really weird. Mm -hmm. Um. In this space, because individuals that you would think would would have a vested interest in um, fighting against and knocking down this mantle of discrimination. Mm -hmm are instead choosing to be mute yeah. and um, silent about it. And you'll see some of that at the reunion. I can only imagine who she's talking about. Probably the Green Eye Bandits, Ashley, and probably Mia. Because I don't see Dr. Wendy Acefo being silent on this issue. She was actually the first to bring it up. Apparently, they will be addressing this on the reunion. The other thing that was asked of, of, of Candace is like, where is she at with the rest of the group? Who do you not like on the show? Oh, God. Um, I mean, it's obviously. At this point, you know, I'm, it's, I'm starting over with everyone. Okay, good. It's like clean. Well, not everyone. Oh, sorry. I'm starting over with most. Okay. Because I was just talking about this with a friend. It's, I'm at a place where it's really hard to know who 
is genuine, yeah. who you can trust, yep. who is not operating from a place of disingenuousness. Mm-hmm. Um, Wendy is my homegirl. I love her. And um, I, I believe that she has always been genuine with me. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm going to keep Wendy. Okay. Um, I don't know about the rest. Okay. Karen, I, I love Karen. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've had our moments. I understand. So the rest, bye. And she says, Wendy is my homegirl, uh, that she loves Karen. They've had their bumps in the road, but she loves Karen. And everyone else, She's starting fresh with. She's saying that. She's starting fresh with this season. And some of you are going to say, Candace, this is where you go wrong. And I don't think that's going wrong. I think, yes, they're filming a show. But based off of her answer, it's clear that these women are not really friends. And we get it. This is a reality show. But the magic sometimes about these reality shows that makes the reality show work is that they do become friends. And although they're not best of friends, they are hanging out outside of the season. And one of the things that I noticed with the Real Housewives of Dubai, it's like none of these ladies besides maybe like Chanel and Lisa were hanging out with each other regularly and having, you see the true friendship and it shows up on camera. So my my message to the cast of the Real Housewives of Potomac, if you're going to come back, all of you going to come back next season, and I know I'm not trying to tell you to force relationships, but at least outside of the cameras, garner an understanding, garner some sort of friendship or association with each other so that when you do start filming, it doesn't feel like this forced situation. It will be interesting because I know a lot of you are like Candace and w- Wendy have given the Green Knight Bandits way too much grace. And I, I, I've said countless times, I'm OK with, with them forgiving the ladies, but do not forget and please set the boundaries because you easily forget what they de- decided to do this season and in past seasons, they are going to do it again. Still no update on whether or not what role Robin will play in this new season, if she will play a role at all. Because I know a lot of you want her fired after everything that played out. But I have a feeling she will be back. But will she be back full time? We shall see. Guys, that is your Real Housewives of Potomac update. I want to know your thoughts on the ratings, your thoughts on the update in regards to the Eminem trademark uh, dispute, and your thoughts on what Candace had to say in regards to colorism and her current friendship with the ladies. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. I got the